Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. It's good to be with you in God's house on this Resurrection Sunday as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. A couple of announcements before we begin service. Uh, please join us for the Easter breakfast following the service over in the gym. Also, we are uh, getting a new church uh, directory put together, so please sign up for, to get your pictures taken. There are sign-ups over on the uh, Welcome Center over in the comments. Also, we are going to be processing in during our opening camp, but before we do that, I invite you to please stand and greet one another with the sharing of the peace.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by the thought we have had of you. We have not loved you with a whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins, as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, and therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We chant responsibly from Psalm 118.
let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you overcame death and opened to us the gates of everlasting life. We humbly pray that we may, be, we may live before you in righteousness and purity forever. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Old Testament reading is from Job chapter 19. Oh, that my words were written. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book. Oh, that with an iron pen and lead they were engraved in the rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and at the last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself. My eyes shall behold, and not another, my heart faints within me. This is the word of the Lord.
Our epistle is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Please write. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early, while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter went out with the other disciple, and they were going toward the tomb. Both of them were running together. But the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping to look in, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying there, and the face cloth, which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he had said these things to her. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. It's good. It sounds like we're getting warmed up. A uh, beautiful thing to see as the sun is rising, illuminating what we were just singing about, about uh, the angel clad in white who sits and speaks unto the three. Your Lord will go to Galilee, and the only way he can go there is because he is risen. He is alive. So if we, many of us have been together during these uh, three days, the Triduum, uh, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Saturday, and now Easter Sunday, um, we've been on this journey with Jesus, and we, uh, on Monday, Thursday, we talked about singing his bleeding love, and then it, we see it and sing it all the more uh, on Good Friday as, as Jesus, the the man of sorrows suffered and sympathizes with and for you and me. And, and there are things, especially on, on Thursday and Friday, that are, well, they're sad. Um, but, but the sadness doesn't last forever. It, in the third book of The Lord of the Rings, it is the, the noble, humble hobbit, Sam, Sam Gamgee, who asked Gandalf the wizard, is everything sad going to come untrue? And the answer, the answer to that is, and the answer that we can give in the church, I don't think Gandalf said it exactly this way, but is everything sad going to come untrue? And the answer to that is, can I get a amen? Yeah, as, uh, you know, as Lutheran Christians, you know, we're usually standing and shouting amen a lot during the sermons. Uh, amen, yeah, can I get an amen, which means yes, absolutely, it is certainly going to be true. But how do you know that? Well, I'll tell you how. Because, hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Early in 1 Corinthians 15... 1526, St. Paul says that the last enemy to be destroyed is death. And in that truth, and in that reality, we know and confess that that, that changes everything. But we also can acknowledge when things are sad. Uh, we can acknowledge when things are messed up, when they are... Uh, when they are not as God intended. The theologian N.T. Wright says that um, to say that death is anything less than an enemy is to deny the goodness and the beauty and the power of God's good creation. And so the ultimate point of the resurrection is the defeat of death. The death is defeated. And the king, the one to whom a week ago on Palm Sunday the crowds shouted out, Hosanna or Hoshana, save us now, we beg, please, that the king, Jesus, is alive. So it's in that spirit then that... Uh, Later in 1 Corinthians 15, as Pastor Luke and I have been preaching through the epistles during this Lenten and now Easter season, it's in that spirit that St. Paul here at the end of the epistle, because ultimately the resurrection holds things together, he says initially that, that flesh and blood, they cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Because the perishable, it cannot inherit the imperishable, Paul says. And, and then he says, and Pastor Luke read it, and I, and I have, uh, I think I've just about got it memorized, probably because at at least half of the funerals over almost 14 years now, I've read it, I've heard it. It, it is a triumphant, uh, defiant portion of Scripture. 
I mean, that's the way that Pastor Luke and I have talked about this. I mean, Pastor Luke is, is really coarse about this, that it's really, it, it, is, it is in some sense giving Satan the finger, right? That Christ is risen. Is that what you meant by that? Yeah, Christ is risen. Uh, and I used to be able to read it that way and say it that way. But it gets harder, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But, but Paul says, well, here's, here's a mystery. The ESV says, look or behold. Uh, I think the NIV says, listen. Listen. Drew, are you listening? Okay. Uh, listen, I tell you a mystery. And, and I don't know if that listen is a, you need to be soothed. And just, just listen. Listen a minute. Just come here. I don't know if the listen is, listen, listen up. Drew, are you listening? Okay, good. Drew recently started saying listen when trying to get our attention at home, so I thought that was fitting for you, Drew. Uh, listen! Or just now, listen. I'm going to tell you how this is. Just listen a minute. I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. It means we shall not all die a physical death. Because, I mean, and perhaps if Christ returns today, you and I will not die a physical death. And the Corinthian Christians in the first century, they were ready. Any moment now. He says, we, 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 we shall not all sleep or die a physical death, potentially. But he says, regardless, we shall all be changed. Because transformation, total transformation is necessary. It is required. And then he says, this is how long it's going to take in a moment. In a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, the last trumpet will sound. Ambrosi asked her, the early Christian, he says that this, this last trumpet, it is the sound of victory. It is the sound of triumph. That the battle, it's over. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Because death is defeated. The king is alive. So he says that trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable. Imperishable. It's decays Reversal. You and I are all decaying. We have a compost bin now, and I'm just eager for the stuff to decay uh, in the compost bin. But this is the opposite of that. Imperishable. Flourishing. And we shall be changed. Completely. And he goes on, he says, this perishable body, decaying body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on the immortal. Mortal body puts on the immortal. Immortal, incapable of dying. In our committal service, and it was one of the Lenten texts from Philippians 3.30, at the committal service it says that Christ will change our lowly bodies our perishable bodies, our mortal bodies, to be like his glorious body by the power that enables him to subdue all things to himself. And then Paul says, when the perishable puts on the imperishable, when that happens, and the mortal puts on immortality, and this is what gets me, See, when the perishable puts on the imperishable, and when the mortal puts on immortality, this is the word that gets me because I am living in attention right now. Because it says, then, then shall come to pass the saying that is written. The saying that is written is death is swallowed up 
in victory. It gets harder and harder. I told you before, Pastor Luke and I learned this. We're not necessarily supposed to cry at funeral sermons. And I've told you every funeral sermon and service is an Easter service. And that's why it gets harder. Death is swallowed up in victory. And then it says, where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? And you know, every time I'm reading this, you know where it is? Right in front of me. Right there. That's where the casket usually is positioned. Right there. I know where it is. Death is swallowed up in victory. It's, it's referring to, I think, Isaiah 25, a beautiful passage of Scripture. That on God's holy mountain, there will be feasting, and there will be rich food, and, and there will be uh, aged wine, well refined. And it says that, that on God's holy mountain, he will swallow up death forever. The problem is, we're not there yet because I'm reminded of it again and again I'm reminded that that I am perishable and so are you that I am mortal and so are you but it says that the last enemy to be nullified to made into nothing is death. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? Death is the enemy. And then Paul says that, well, the, the sting, the sting of death is sin. And because after all, you and I only die because we're sinners. And the sting of death is sin. And the power of sin is the law. I think St. Paul references this in Romans 7, about the good that he should do, he doesn't do, and the things that he's not supposed to do, he well, he's, wants to do those. I, I think it's in simple ways. I mean, I'm fine with a lot of things until you tell me I can't do it. I'm fine with a lot of things until, until you tell me I have to do it. I mean, that's something that's maybe a daily reality for some of us. Oh, I, I was indifferent. Oh, you said I have to do it? Well, no way. Lord, have mercy. And he does. He hears our Hosanna. He has heard and he still hears. Lord, save us now. So Paul says, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The victory. That death is defeated. The King is alive. And we sing of His bleeding love. We sing of His living love. His breathing love. And throughout eternity, our song, it, it will not be taken away. It will only get clearer and louder it will never be silenced Anthony Esselin a writer he says that, that true Christians don't just talk about religion or a system of religion but we talk about and we sing about you know who we talk and sing about Jesus yeah Jesus and we don't just say, well, you know, it's a historical fact. I mean, you can say this. Christ rose from the dead. He did. But we say it differently. Don't we? We say, let's try it again. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And see, that is a defining, not only moment, 
but reality because everything is changed. Our lives are changed forever. Now it takes faith and hope to believe it and trust in it on those gray and weary days. But we are friends, we are sons and daughters of the the living Lord and King. We are witnesses to the transforming power of the resurrection. And we can be honest, look, this, this present flesh and blood, it will decay and die, but God intends, God wills a new world, a new creation. And in, and in that new creation, and Jesus already is reigning, we're in the now, but the not yet, then shall come to pass. In that world, in that new creation, on the eighth day, decay and death, well, they're not merely accommodated or explained away. They're not to be bargained with, don't need to litigate. They are defeated, destroyed, nullified, made to nothing. At the beginning of the school year, um, we, we talked about, uh, and, it, and it's still going to be our theme for the National Youth Gathering um, in Colossians 1, 15 to 20, that in all things, all things are held together by Jesus. Um, all things were created in him and through him and by him and for him. And part of that, we said, and Pastor Luke and I are doing this uh, um, as we come up to Confirmation Sunday in just uh, two weeks. That the goal, not only for the Confirmands, but for all of us, is to tell the story of your baptism. There's the font. To tell the story of your baptism. And, and one of the... Uh, Easter epistle lessons is from Colossians 3, and it says that you are hidden in Christ, that, that you and I are baptized, and you have been raised. You've been crucified with Christ, but also raised with Christ, and your life is safe and secure. It really is, as you're hidden in Christ, with Christ, in God. And so that story, the true story, the reality is, yes, everything has changed. It does take faith and hope to believe it, but it is all about Jesus. And this is the story that the scriptures tell in many and various ways. But it has come true. The story of all creation reaching its intended design and purpose, what God intended. It's the story of enemies being defeated, and whether that is Egypt or Assyria or Babylon or Rome, or ultimate enemies, sin and death and the power of the devil. It is the story, the reality, the song of God's victory the Creator's victory for you and me. It is trusting and confessing that yes, there are sad things, but one day is coming when all the sad things come untrue. And that is because of Jesus, the one who is the way and the truth and the life, the one who is the light that the darkness will never <coughs> overcome. Death is swallowed up in victory. And as we see it and mark it, yes, we can say that is awful, but in the face of that, we say, I know that my Redeemer, our Redeemer, lives. And He has stood upon the earth, and He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and He will come again. And on that day that He comes again, we will say, Death, where's your victory? Death, where is your sting? On that day when Jesus reaches down and pulls, unless he comes back today and we haven't died yet, and pulls you and me out of your grave. 
to behold him face to face, but then to see all of creation, brothers and sisters and those who are now asleep, safe and sound in Jesus will be awakened to life, to immortal life. Bodies that are imperishable, to be like Jesus, our Savior and Lord, the one who is our song of Alleluia or Hallelujah. And that being said, when we are in the presence of the King, and because on that day when we are raised, you're going to be able to stand up. So in the spirit of that, I think we're going to, clo- we're going to close we're, the sermon with the Hallelujah or Alleluia chorus. So let's, I'll, I'll say, Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. All right, let's stand and you can listen and sing and Thank you.
we confess together the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, on this glorious day, fill your people with a holy fear at the resurrection of your Son, that we would tremble no longer before the grave, but rejoice and live in the truth of your power to save. Lord, in your mercy, be with our Synod, the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, our Synodical and District Presidents, and all, our, all of our pastors. Keep them faithful to deliver to your people the gospel of your son's death, burial, and resurrection. We also pray for all church workers, and especially those who serve here at St. John in Little Wings, and we especially pray for Matthew Hill as he deliberates the call. Lord, in your mercy, have mercy on the sick and those in any need. We especially pray for Brian as he travels and for Christine as she has surgery this week. Let the dawning light of the new creation in Christ sustain them in faith in, in accord with your will. Grant them renewed health, a foretaste of their eternal healing in Him. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. comfort those who mourn with the truth of Christ's empty tomb, that in the midst of their grief they may abide in the hope of His resurrection. Uphold them in faith as they await the day when you will wipe away every tear from all faces. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. We join today in singing eternal alleluias with innumerable angels, with the assembly of the firstborn enrolled in heaven, and with the spirits of the righteous made perfect. And we bring these petitions before you, dear Father, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we continue worship by gathering our tithes and offerings. We also welcome you to St. John and ask you to fill out the attendance card and place those cards in the offering plate to gather our offerings. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Please rise for the operatory. Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. And most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death. And by his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary, Peter, and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship, with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he gave thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he gave thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Let your body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you both in body and soul today and to life everlasting. Depart in his joy and peace. Amen. Please rise and thank the Lord. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. We implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. As a note, as we sing our closing hymn, please note that the choir is singing verses 4 and 7.